stocks our strategists feel are poised to deliver positive returns are featured now in their top stock picks of the week. This is Brian Boland on I Am the Aggressive Growth Stock Strategist, and I'm here with my top stock pick for the week. And as you can see, it's Chart Industries, and it's GTLS, and those are the ticker symbols for Chart Industries. Uh, let's go. Let's start here. It's Zach's rank number one, strong buy. We always like to see that. Uh, with D's for value and for growth, normally in my videos for growth, I'm looking for A's for growth and a weak value score because that divergence would tell me that I'm on the right path. But this is the top stock pick for the week. And uh, I'm not that concerned with the growth style score right now. But let's go through and uh, take a look at why I like this stock. Uh, we can see from the recent earnings history. We'll start at the bottom here, the recent earnings history. We've got two misses right there, but then two beats. And the beats were bigger than the misses over the last uh, you know, four quarters. So we've got a positive uh, earnings surprise. Here we can see estimates moving the right direction. 66 to 91 cents, 84 to $1.05, 248 to 315, 324 to 399. Gosh, you gotta love it when you see every single estimate thing that we can have here moving in the right direction. And, and that's what the Zach's rank is all about. And when we see that, we, then we're gonna move on to the valuation section. Uh, you know, 23 times forward PE, it's better than the 26 times trailing. Uh, it's a little bit higher than the market multiple, uh, especially when you're talking about no top line growth there. But a price to book of lower, lower than three will, will keep value players interested. Uh, almost a two times price to sales. Uh, and, you know, a little bouncing around here on my margins. So I'm seeing margins go from 7.0 to 7.4 back to 7.3. It's a little all over the place. Um, you know, your net margin is doing much better there, you know, 3.6 to, to 4 to 4.5, basically, when I when I round that out. So that is in the right direction. I'm trying to make it look like an like I've drawn an arrow here, although I'm, you know, I'm just not good at, at drawing things uh, on screens. I, I'll get there, though. Just a few more years of doing this, and I should be okay. Uh, so let's take a look at the chart here. Uh, and this is really why I wanted to talk about this stock. You know, I, I, I think we're here at like the $72 range, right? But we can see earlier in the year, we were, we were 90, uh, you know, with, with the early beat in, in the beginning of the year, um, then a miss, then a beat, and then miss, miss, and then beat, beat. Um, so th 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 this was 2019. So the stock was in the 90s at that point. Uh, and I, I don't think it's too unreasonable uh, to find this stock back here in another few months. Now, granted, this is the top stock pick for the week, but I think that this is one that we can uh, take a look at, get a little deeper into the idea of what's going on here, because it, all, all the numbers are looking good enough for me. And uh, that's why I've made this stock my Zach's top stock pick of the week. Let me throw it this over to David Bowrun to check out his top stock pick of the week. Hey, thanks, Brian. So for me, one of the most important things about being a savvy investor uh, is the ability to change your mind about something. Uh, even the most well-laid thesis for an investment uh, can change almost in an instant uh, as conditions change, company management changes, decisions change, uh, and it can be for the worse. Uh, you can take a company that you loved uh, and find out that something really awful is going to happen and you need to change your mind. You can also find out that a company you didn't care for very much uh, is actually poised to outperform the rest of the stocks. And you have to be able to uh, adapt, change your own opinion. Uh, and that's what I'm doing here today with my top stock pick, which is Papa John's Pizza. Now, two years ago, uh, I thought this company was dead in the water. Uh, the founder and CEO and chairman of the board, John Schnatter, uh, had made a couple of pretty significant errors. Uh, first, he made some critical comments about the NFL uh, that cost the company a, a pretty lucrative sponsorship deal. Uh, and then he was reported to have made some very racially insensitive comments during company sensitivity training, ironically, uh, and that cost him his seat on the board. Uh, now, at the same time this was happening, as, as the name was becoming somewhat toxic, uh, the pizza business was also locked in a price war. Uh, where all the big chains were offering $5.99, $6.99 pizzas, essentially lost leaders 
uh, with the hopes that customers would end up buying a, a side dish or soft drinks or something else that the, the business made money on. But uh, it, it was looking pretty bleak for Papa John's. I made it my bear of the day at, at least a couple times during that period. Uh, well, things are significantly different now, uh, partly the result of good management decisions and partly the result of circumstance uh, that just kind of went Papa John's way. So uh, when Schneider left, Papa John's appointed uh, Steve Ritchie, who was a longtime franchisee and company insider, uh, temporary uh, CEO. Uh, and then last year made Rob Lynch, who was formerly the president of uh, Arby's, the permanent CEO. Uh, and these guys have done a great job turning around the, the company. So uh, we have, we're looking at 5,400 stores, 3,000 in the US, uh, 600 of which are factory owned, the remainder are franchised locations. Uh, and then the remainder of the stores are in 48 other countries around the world. Main competition is Domino's, obviously, and Yum Brands, which is the parent company of Pizza Hut, uh, as well as privately held companies like Little Caesars and a number of uh, regional pizza chains. So it's a competitive business, uh, but it's definitely turning around. Uh, Schnatter, at the time he left, owned approximately 30% of the company's shares. Uh, and he has since sold those shares down to about a 4% holding in the company. Uh, he's also involved in some ongoing legal battles ab about the uh, nature of his ouster, but uh, it looks not to be a, to have a big effect on the company at all. Uh, during that time, the stock has more than doubled. So even with the selling pressure of a, sharehold, a huge shareholder like Schnatter, uh, investors are really still seeing the potential in this business. Same store sales. Uh, right now are up double digits at most locations. Uh, and the board made the very wise decision to add Shaquille O'Neal uh, as not only a company spokesman, but a member of the board of directors and then also a multi-unit franchisee. Now, Shaq is one of these ex-athlete guys uh, who has a squeaky clean image, can endorse virtually any product, uh, and despite the fact that he's a big star, still retains sort of an everyman kind of persona uh, that people tend to relate to. Similar to Peyton Manning or in the past, Joe Montana. Guy, big stars from their own sport uh, that still kind of make you feel like their best friend. So Shaq has his own product line, including the Shaqaroni pizza, uh, which not only is popular, but includes big slices and, and a lot of meat on the pizza, just like you'd imagine Shaq would probably eat himself uh, while he's watching a basketball game. Uh, and it includes a donation to social justice charities. So that's been a very popular item. Shaq has been a great addition to the team. Uh, last quarter, revenues were up to uh, 461 million, which is 15% above uh, the, the same quarter year over year. Uh, it was a slight disappointment in revenues, but it was also a based on analyst estimates. But it was also accompanied by a beat in earnings uh, from 40 cents a share estimate to 48 cent report. Uh, so what you see there is that margins are improving. Now, again, this is this has occasionally been a very competitive cutthroat business, but the fact that they're selling slightly less in terms of total sales than estimates, but still blowing away the earnings estimate means they're commanding higher margins, which is the name of the game in the fast food business. Uh, the Zach's consensus estimate for 2020 is up 28 percent over the last 90 days uh, and for 2021 is up 21 uh, percent. That earns it as Zach's rank number one. Uh, this is not a cheap stock. So we're looking at a 68 times forward 12 month PE. Uh, now that's higher than fast food competitors like McDonald's, uh, but that's not really the correct comparison, right? We're really looking at the higher growth fast food or quick service restaurants like Chipotle, which trades at uh, 113 or 114 times. Uh, so in, in that regard, it's actually somewhat reasonably priced. So all those factors, the, the incredible turnaround, the pressure moves by the board, the departure of the toxic executive that was holding the company back. Uh, these are all why Papa John's is my top stock pick of the day.